This lesson is really just practice on how to solve linear equations. So I've thrown a little bit of everything in here. There are six practice questions. This is a simple step-by-step -step guide of how you would go about solving linear equations from beginning to end. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to simplify as much as you can each side of the equation. Um, one of the things obviously is to clear any parentheses. We've done some practice on that already. If you have fractions or decimals, it's good to clear those too. There will be separate lessons on those once we get to that. Uh, so I won't give you any fractions or decimals today. And then of course we're gonna combine like terms. And not a bad idea in step one or maybe even before step one is to go ahead and do your KFC, keep flip change, so that you don't have any question marks as to where the negatives or minuses go. After you've done that, you're going to get all of the variables on one side of the equation. So we just practice that, adding or subtracting to get those variables to one side and then get the constants to the other side. I suggest you do it in this order. A lot of people like to get those constants first and sometimes you get into trouble that way. So focus on your variables because that's what you're trying to solve for. And then of course we'll multiply or divide so that we can say what one X or one Y is equal to and always a good idea to check your answer at the end. Let's do some practice together. So for our first question, remember not a bad idea to draw your wall. On the left side, nothing I can do to simplify. I just have 8z plus 7. On the right side, I need to clear the parentheses. 3 times z is 3z, and 3 times minus 6 is minus 18. If I wanted to keep flip change, of course, I could have that as plus negative 18, and whichever one is better for you is the way you should write it. Now I have to collect my variables on one side of my equal sign. So one side of the wall should have the z's and the other side should have the numbers. So I'm going to choose to subtract 3z from each side. To subtract 3z will make it so that all of my z's are on the left side of the wall. So 8 minus 3 is 5 z's. Bring down my plus 7. On the right side I don't have any more z's and that's what I wanted and now I have negative 18. So not a bad idea, now that I did that keep flip change before, I know that the 18 is negative. Now I need to get rid of this, um, need to get z by itself, so I need to get 5z by itself first, so I have to get rid of plus seven by subtracting. And remember, whenever I subtract, I can always keep flip change so really I have a negative 18 plus a negative seven, which is a negative 25. I need to get Z by itself now, so I get rid of that times five by dividing by five, and Z turns out to be negative five. Let's do the next question. On the left side, I've got some simplification to do. The first thing is to clear the parentheses by distributing the five to both terms. On the right side, those terms do not combine together. They're not like terms. Again, before I do any properties of equality, I still have this situation on the left side where I have two values that are like terms. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5x plus 13 by combining the three and the 10. And nothing has happened on the right side. I just keep rewriting it. And now it's time to do uh, my property of equality. I'm going to choose to subtract 4x because I want to deal with positive x values. 5x minus 4x is 1x, or just x. Bring down the plus 13. My 4x and minus 4x turn into zero, so they go away. And again, I've got minus eight, so that minus and negative, they're the same thing. Now I'm going to subtract 13 from each side of the equation because I want to get x by itself. 8 minus 13 means I'm going to keep flip change. I've got two values that are negative. I'm going to combine them together to get negative 21. And that is my answer. Feel free to take your negative 21, plug it back into your original equation and make sure that both sides work. So I would plug it back in both here and here to evaluate. Two more for us to try. Again, I wanted to make sure we tried some of the more complicated questions. 
Uh, for the first one, I have a choice. I can subtract 3x from each side or add 4x. Whenever I choose between subtraction or addition, I always choose addition. I will choose to add 4x to each side. On the left side, 3 plus 4 is 7x. Everything else just gets recopied. Those 4x is canceled. Now I have the side with the variable and I'm going to isolate 7x first to get rid of minus 14. I have to add 14. Negative 14 and plus 14 cancel. That gives me 7x. On the right side, 7 plus 14 is 21. Now I'm going to divide by 7 because this was 7 times x. I did the opposite, which is division. That gives me x on the left. 21 divided by 7 is 3 on the right. This one's going to be just so much fun, I can tell already. On the left side, I've got parentheses, so I'm going to recopy my first two terms and distribute the negative 3. That gives me minus 3x and minus 6, so be very careful here with your keep flip change. That's a negative that we're distributing to both. On the right side, uh, I can go ahead and combine these two like terms of 4x and minus 1x to give me 3x plus 12. I still can't use any of my properties of equality because I have a hot mess over here, so I need to do a little cleanup first. These two terms are like terms, negative 2 and negative 3 combined to negative 5x, and my plus 10 and my minus 6 combined together to plus 4. So now this is the equation that I have. Now I just need to decide where are my x's going to go. So I'm going to choose to, if I want to deal with positive values, I'm going to add 5x to each side, even though it's in the wrong side of the side that I typically like it on. I like to deal with those positive values. So I bring down my 4, 3 plus 5 is 8. I bring down my plus 12. Now I'm going to isolate x. 8x by subtracting 12. Remember when I subtract, I can always keep flip change. These are different signs. I find the difference and give it the sign of the bigger number. Bring down my 8x, my 12s go away. Here I would divide by 8 on each side and get negative 1 on the left and x on the right. And that's my answer. Here are two for you to try. So go ahead and try both, then press play to see how you did. The first one is fairly straightforward. There are no parentheses I need to clear. I just need to get all of my z's to one side. So I'll start by subtracting 2z. Because I like to deal with positive values, I'm going to subtract the smaller number. 3z minus 2z is 1z, or just z. Bring down minus 8. My 2z's cancel. Bring down minus 15. So remember that minus stays with the 15. And now I have to isolate z by getting rid of minus 8. The opposite of minus 8 is plus 8. I do that to both sides. On the left side, I have just z. On the right side, I have two signs that are a different sign, so I find their difference and give it the sign of the larger number. Feel free to do that check to make sure that it works out. And on my last question, I have a parenthesis to clear, so I have to distribute that negative 2. Negative 2a and minus 16. I rewrite my minus 9a, and nothing on the right side will simplify. Before I can use a property of equality, I have to combine like terms on the left side. I have a negative 2 and a negative 9. Same sign, I find the sum of 11 and give it the common sign, which was negative. And now I have an equation with a variable on each side. You choose what you would like to do. I like to deal with positive values, so I'm going to add 11 to each side because now I know I get to deal with positive a values. Bring down that minus 16. 4a plus 11a is 15a. Bring down minus 1. Now I'm trying to isolate 15a, so I get rid of minus 1 by adding 1. When I add 1, these are different signs. I find the difference, which is 15. Give it the sign of the larger number. And now I'm going to divide by 15 to get negative 1 equals A.